Hi, this is the conclusion of Chapter 5 of Through the Mist. Red is in shock. He thought that if Ava knew who he was for sure, that she could not have been so close to him and yet let him kiss her or make advances to her. Besides the pictures and the paintings, how could you be sure it was me? he asked. I had just found the pictures and the paintings the week before, along with the scrapbook from the attic. I heard you speak that day, then saw your face, but the name you had given didn't fit. I was very curious to find out who you really were. I wasn't sure that's why I continued to play detective until I found out who you really were. Do you know how dangerous it could have been if I, ha if I hadn't been Red McLean? I'm not sure how we fit into each other's lives. Maybe the scrapbook of the past might have some answers, he said. You were supposed to be a relative of mine. You are all the family that I have left, Ava tells Red. Aye, you're right, but we are not blood related. I felt a little bad about being so attractive to you after finding out who you were. I still feel like we are family even if there is no blood relation. I was adopted into the McDonald family. My mother now was my birth mother's sister. My real mother died giving birth to me, so her sister and her husband took me in to live with them. My grandfather told me that I was a McLean and wanted my name to remain McLean. There was a lot of resentment towards the name McDonald and mine too being changed to it. I think that is why my adopted mother and dad split up. I love my adopted father, but to this day I do not know who my real father is. Do you think I would have continued to make advances towards you if we were related? I knew that I was adopted at a very early age. I overheard them fighting one night before we left for Scotland. That's why when we were very young, I told you that I wanted to marry you. It was because I could, Red said. I'm so glad for the part that I'm not related to you because I was falling in love with you. I have a lot of questions to ask. I just don't know where to start. I have only been told that your last name was McLean. I don't know much about the McDonald name either. There isn't any connection with Mark McDonald. Is it or a problem? Ava has a smile on her face and that has been long overdue. She didn't know that the information on Mark that Red was going to tell her about was a real problem. For the first time Ava reaches over gently, touches Red's face with her hand, and then told him that she had missed him so. Let's read this book and maybe it will give both of us some answers. Red smiles and curls up on the bed with Ava and pulls her close to him. One of the family members had compiled information on the Boudet and the McClains. It told of their connection with each other for centuries. This book had disappeared years ago. Ava found it in an old cedar box that was so old and broken that she was amazed anyone would have stored anything in it. Boxes and crates had been piled up on the cedar box. Her mother, grandmother, and great-grandmother never threw anything away hoping that it would be worth something someday. For Ava, it had been 
proven correct because most of her antique shop was full of old things from the attic and the cellar. It started the business for her and Paul. They began to read the book and look at the old pictures of Ava's family. Red explains things as they read to fill in the places that are not written and his life and his family's life connected with hers. Ava is so touched by the gentleness and kindness in his voice. She could be getting a part of her life back through him. Red tries to explain why he didn't tell her who he was as soon as he realized who she was. Red didn't want to tell Ava at this time about Mark McDowell and that he had something to do with the barn fire. He wanted to protect Ava as much as possible. According to Mom and Dad, you didn't have a good childhood. At least it wasn't a happy one. How did you turn out to be so compassionate? Ava asked. I met a Christian doctor while I was in the military, and he showed me a different way of life. He was so compassionate towards people. He loved them, even if they didn't love him back. Somehow, it changed me, and I wanted to live and be like him, or at least I have been trying to. Red tried the best way he could to explain it to her. It sounds like you might have accepted Jesus into your heart. Ava was silent. That's what my friend tried to get me to do, but I told him I wasn't ready, Red tells Ava. I think you are ready. You just don't know it. Ava is patient not to push just yet. Changing the subject for now until he was ready to be harvested, Ava moves on with her questions. So, you came to Natchez to find out what happened to the family, she asked. Sid and I did not believe that the automobile accident was an accident either, so I'm here to investigate it. I plan to go to Baton Rouge alone and talk to the investigator on the case. I don't know how long it will take me to get a lead, but I am staying until I find out what happened, Red reassures her. Please let me go with you. I'm good at investigating. Just look, I've been investigating you since you got here, and I found out about you, didn't I? Ava insisted. No, absolutely not. You won't have pictures and a painting to identify someone this time for your investigation, like you did on me. The day I go, I plan on you staying with Sam the entire day. I'll be back before the day is over, Red frowns. You know you are still as stubborn as you always were. Wait a minute. You know who might have done this? Did you? Ava turned around to him and looked at him in the eyes. How could I have known that this early in the investigation? I've been here with you the entire time that I've arrived. Red knows Ava is a smart woman. I know that look and the way you turned your lip up when you lie about something. You are not being honest with me, Ava said. I told you about the name Mark McDonald, Red says. Yes, why? How well do you know him? Red urgently asked. About five years ago, he bought out one of the local banks. My fa family's attorney said that he was okay and our money would be safe. Ava looks at Red with a little apprehension. And I guess your family's attorney suggested for you to drop any more ideas of a family being murdered, too. Look, Ava, Mark McDonald has been in a lot of trouble. 
He is a very wicked man, Red tells her. You are scaring me, Ava moves even closer to Red. The night of the fire, I heard a truck leave quickly. It returned to leave quickly again. One of the men told me who it was. It was Mark McDonald. I didn't know how well you knew him. I just know that he is very dangerous. Red tells Ava and she begins to cry. I wish my father was here to explain things to me. There are so many unanswered questions about all that has happened. When I was young, I felt there must be more going on in his life. He shared with me some of it when I was older, but nothing that makes sense to me. What he shared with me had nothing to do with Mark. Did he know that something like this would happen some day and try to prepare me? Ava sadly says. I, I think he probably did know something like this would happen. Our family was to keep a promise. We were to keep watch over your family because of the McDonald's. Something happened to the last few generations of McLean's and we didn't keep a close watch, Red sighs. What happened? Tell me, Ava looks with concern. My great-grandfather, Neil McLean, left Natchez in the 1800s. He returned years later. His son, Malcolm, married, and after his father's death, he moved back with his family to Scotland, Red said. I know that name. My great-grandmother told me the sweetest love story of her mother and a man she was not able to marry because he had to leave this area many years ago. Go on, please, Ava says. Well, we didn't return until my mother came back with her sister. Her sister met Edwin McDonald here in Natchez and married him. After mother's death, they adopted me. He left here, as you know, when I was six years old. They had a son seven years later and named him Mark McDowell. Red pauses. You're related to Mark McDowell? I'm sorry to interrupt. Go ahead, Ava says. See, I should know how bad Mark is because we were in the same house until he got so difficult to handle. I really think he was the cause of my father's and aunt's divorce. I had to move to my grandparents' house to live. I don't know why she married a McDonald anyway. No one believed my great-grandfather when he tried to warn everyone that something bad was going to happen again. I guess he waited too long before he told anyone, and he was so old that no one believed him anyhow. If I had realized how serious he was, I, wa I would have returned to Natchez when Mark did. I should have known that he was up to no good again. I didn't think he knew anything about your family. I'm sorry. Red drops his head. You couldn't have known what happened. This is a lot to take in all at one time. Do you know what I'm thinking of now? No, what? Ava reaches over, pushes Red down on the bed, and passionately kisses him. Forgetting for the moment that her hands are injured, she gets carried away a little bit with Red. Ava pulls back and uses the excuse of her injuries to cool things off between them. Do you know what you do to me? I'm cool. Would you like for me to run some water for a bath or something? Red is getting nervous. Yes, I know what I do to you. Yes, I would like you to run some water for me. Thanks, she tells him. I'll be downstairs so you can have plenty of privacy. If you need me, just call out, Red said. Thank you. Is the story getting interesting now? This concludes Chapter 5. Thank you.